Hi guys, PJ here. To do today, I am working on a 2004 Ford Focus. Now, this is the uh, like the original style, but the facelift version. So, uh, I'm going to basically be putting an X-Base camera into the vehicle wired to the fuse box. So, in other words, you keep your cigarette lighter or power outlet empty for use for other things. Also, stops the cable from dangling down in front of the window screen and being annoying. So, uh, this will be a quick guide. It's a very, very simple car to work on. And I'm using, as you can see here, a next base fitting kit. Now, in the fitting kit comes a fuse spur, which is basically like a double up socket for one of your fuses in your fuse box. It gives you another socket, so it literally doubles up. It's a bit like the, the uh, four way mains extensions where you plug them in and it gives you extra socket. Same principle. You get your actual power cable, you do not use the one that comes with the camera. So, on one end, you've got micro USB, you've got a power and an earth cable there bit of a filter and you also get an interference choke for dab radio etc okay so once you've got your fitting kit there's a couple of really useful things that you can do with having one a plastic leverage tool this is a bojo tool you can use anything that's plastic uh, you can get them off ebay these for like a pound or so don't be tempted to use metal screwdrivers to lever your plastic dashboard you will damage the dashboard uh, the other thing that you may find helpful some electrical tape just for gathering up all your spare cable when you've nearly finished uh, never use this to twist wires together and tape them together always crimp or solder all your connections together some long nose pliers always a handy thing to have some fuses are recessed quite far in and you can just carefully pull your fuse out with those while your ignition is off your actual fitting kit and fuse box is located behind the glove box on this vehicle so here as you can see I've already done a bit of preparation because I unfortunately don't have too long today this is your fuse spur I was on about and basically what you've got here is a fuse to run the camera and a spare socket here to use the fuse you remove from your fuse box so in other words you plug your fuse from your fuse box into here and then plug this into where the fuse came from now obviously we're going to use a multimeter or a illuminated screwdriver to see which fuses go on and off with the ignition. Now bear in mind you only want to be using accessory fuses uh, such as uh, heater, that sort of thing. Nothing to do with airbags or ABS or anything like that. Okay, accessory fuses only for this one. This style of focus does use the full size fuse like this. It's not on the mini blade ones, it is the older style. And all you're going to do, you start at the top of the vehicle. So you've got your screen pillar here, right at the top. And we're going to have our camera dangling down here. There's your power cable up. And there's your ferrous filter. Now these ferrous filters are like a round thing. And basically, I'll just show you one. There. So they're basically a round thing with clips on you. You can open those up. So literally spread them open. And then all you have to do is wrap the wire across it, over it, and round again and out. So, in other words, in a loop like that. Very straightforward, that stops interference for dab radios, etc. Or helps, anyway. The next thing I tend to do is wrap a couple of cable ties around the cable. Sort of one in the middle here, one up tucked under here. Cover them in electrical tape once you've snipped them off so they don't rub the headlining on the inside because they can be quite sharp. This is to stop the cable falling down when you hit one of the uh, wonderful potholes that are in the road. You don't want to be driving along and all of a sudden the, you know, the cable come boinging down in front of you. Just be careful when you pull the headlining. Uh, it is only made of a sort of fabric fibre substance. You don't have to go at it like a bull in a gate. You can just simply ease it slightly to get the cable tucked under. When you get along to the corner here on this particular model car, your screen pillar is also going all the way along to the, uh, the holders here, your handholds. So all you've got to do is get your plastic pry tool that you've got, pop it behind, and it'll click, it'll come off, like so. Then you've got a nice gap to pop your cable through, tuck it down all round here, yeah? And then go all the way down the edge of the screen pillar. It is flexible, look, you can move it. Don't, don't pull it too hard and snap it, but it is flexible. All the way down until you get your cable dropping out the bottom here. Once you've done that, excuse me guys, we're rather cold today. It's only just above freezing, so for the snuffles there. Um, 
You've got your earth connection here. I've took out the 10mm bolt, the bottom one. Don't worry, your dashboard won't go anywhere. There is more than one hold it in. We've took that out, put a ring terminal behind it, and that is your earth connection done. Next up, your power cable. Because like I say, your thick black cable here that goes to your camera goes to a little little uh, box there and then splits off into the power in the earth. Feed your power cable through behind the dash so that it comes out here, yeah? And then you've got the fuse box. Now these cars are brilliantly fuse boxed because they're so easy to look at. You've got a nice diagram here showing you what everything does. Now myself, I have run a multimeter on them. Um, you know, any multimeter will do. I use an old one like so. And I'm actually using the AC fuse, uh, which I believe is fuse F45 on this particular car. Goes on and off with the ignition, isn't a critical system. Ideal. Like I say, avoid airbags and stuff. Before you start testing fuses and messing around, because obviously your fuse box uh, may have different things plugged in it, depending on the year and spec of your car. So you will have to test your own fuses, yeah? Don't use anything uh, airbag orientated, otherwise you'll have a warning light on when you when you come to start your car. If any of this bothers you, obviously seek professional advice, pay a professional to do it, you don't want to damage your car. And by that, I am held no way responsible or liable for any damage to your vehicle or injury to yourself. So, what you're testing is to make sure with the ignition off that your fuse is dead, that there is no power. So if you're using one of those little illuminated screwdrivers, you want it to not light up. So you'll touch the tab, the little metal bit there on the fuse, yeah? Touch that, and if your screwdriver doesn't light up with the ignition off, that's good. Turn your ignition on and see if your screwdriver lights up. If it does, that is an ignition switched fuse. Like I say, you can try your own if your fuse box layout's different. If you find an ignition switched fuse that's on a non-critical system, an accessory circuit, go ahead and turn your ignition off and pull your fuse out. So for this, I'll be using my long nose pliers. The car does come with a proper tool to remove fuses, but they're a bit hopeless. They're made of plastic and not very good. It says the fuse out. And all we're going to do with that fuse now is slide it into this holder. Like so. So you've got one fuse for the camera, one fuse for the circuit. On this particular car being the AC circuit. Okay, pop your fuse, hold it in. I don't know if you get the camera see that properly there. Like so. Nice and firm, make sure it's in all the way. You can then pull your cable through a little bit just to tidy it up. And before you go tidying all this up and clicking any trim back on, because you've noticed here we've removed the little panel. Now the little panel is very easy to remove. It's on a, a push fit clip at the bottom and two little dots at the top. So it's just sort of, if I get the panel and show you. There we go, a little push fit clip at the bottom and a slider at the top. So when it's on, just pop the bottom and then pull down. Okay, so now we will test the camera to make sure it comes on before we reassemble. Okay, so with your camera mounted, now normally the cameras come with two mounts, the uh, sticky back type and the suction mounts. Suction mounts are fine for normal glass, but if you've got this textured black area you're sticking to, the sticky one is your one. Your suction mount will not stick to it. Don't forget to pop your memory card in, and then we're going to pop the ignition on and make sure this thing powers up. Ignition on, and there we go, all powered up and ready to go. At this point, you can switch your ignition back off and tidy up all your cabling. And there we go, all taped up tucked away we've tucked it down here out the way the little box and all the rest of the power cable and then you can go ahead and slide your trim back on again I'm not gonna be able to do this one-handed guys I have tried before and it doesn't work but uh, oh there we go managed it <laughs> okay now if you've got any questions regarding this car or any other model of car can be anything from I don't know a mini to a Rolls-Royce just pop them in the comments below I always do my best to get back to you the same working day Thank you very much for watching the video and if it was any help to you please click like on your way out. Bye for now.